What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Dev Slopes. It is 2024 and we wanted to kick off this year with something special. So I spent the last eight hours researching the coding job market and that's what we're gonna be looking at right now. So right now we're in Q1 of 2024 and there's a lot going on and people are asking questions of where is the coding job market going? And I'm here to provide some relief to aspiring programmers and if you're wondering if you should learn how to code in 2024, if it's even still a great field to get into. So a lot happened in 2023 and that's no doubt. So let's take a look first at what people are saying about 2024. If we look on Reddit here, I got laid off back in May with about one year and eighth month experience. I haven't been able to land anything and I did get some interviews but ultimately got rejected and now I barely get interviews. Applying to jobs fills me with so much dread because all of the rejection is starting to impact my self esteem. I'm at the point where I'm literally open to any office corporate job just so I can have a salary and use my degree somewhat. People asking questions like, will the market be back anytime soon? I was laid off earlier this year with no luck. I've been living by myself for a minute in hopes that if the job market opens for entry level job, I can return to work easily. So let's take a look at what happened in 2023. So in 2023, these were the job postings on Indeed in the US. So we can look right here, nothing was going on too crazy in 2020. And in 2021, going into 2022, we had a major spike of job postings on Indeed. There were a lot of job openings and the market was high, high, high. Programming was a very in-demand field. We started to see this drop off around June to December of 2022. And in 2023, things look like they started to just fizzle down slower and slower. So the question question was, was there a tech hiring bubble? And yet, if we look at jobs open compared to software development jobs, there's a big gap. Comparison they put here is IT operations and help desk versus software development jobs. And let's look at this gap. Look at this gap. Software development was in high demand and then closer towards the end of the year, it started to fizzle out. The graph shows overall level of job postings declined during the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, bouncing back to pre-pandemic levels 12 months later, soon after. And while help wanted ads for IT and operation help desk staffing remain depressed, the level of job postings in software development started to quickly outpace the rising national trend. Ads for designing computer applications or programs more than doubled their February 2020 level. So it's clear that we had a lot, a lot, a lot of jobs open. And the best part about that was there were high paying jobs. Web developers were getting paid around $89,000 a year for an average salary. Now that's a lot of money with top paying salaries at $165,000 a year. So the field was crushing it around 2022 and 2023. So what's happening now? Why are we seeing this decline and what's coming next? So if you look at who was affected by a lot of the layoffs in 2023, we can clearly see that a lot of big tech companies let employees go. There was massive layoffs in 2023. Let's just remember what happened with Twitter, Facebook, Meta, all of those things. So the question was, who was affected? 27% of layoffs in tech related to HR and talent sourcing, while 22% of layoffs were in software engineering. If we just take a look at this graph here, we can see that software engineering did take a big hit when it came to layoffs. Nearly half of those impacted in the layoffs were around the 30 to 40 age range and most effective were the 20 to 30. Now what this tells us was it was a lot of junior positions, a lot of entry level job positions that were affected by this. Now the aftermath, who is in on the job market? A worrying statistic in our tech layoff research is that just over 10% of the workers in our sample have found new job as of January, 2023. The rest are still on the job market, competing for the same positions during hiring freezes and continuing layoffs. A lot of the FANG companies really laid off a lot of people and this trickled downward to a lot of the smaller companies. People realized that they didn't need as many developers to do certain things. The layoffs may partially be a consequence of companies' plans to invest in AI and automation. 
Now, there, I'm gonna get into some of the things that you need to keep in mind if you're struggling to look for a job or if you're looking for a job or if you think coding is even a programming field you wanna get into, so just stay tuned for those. But let's go ahead and take a look at how AI is affecting the job market by checking out the Stack Overflow Developer Survey. Now, this is what programmers have to say about AI, and if you guys wanna check out this survey and any of the information, it's all gonna be in the link down below, so be sure to check it out. So 70% of all respondents are using and planning to use AI tools in their development process this year. Those learning to code will be more likely than professional developers to use AI tools. So the, the, the general idea is that AI is going to be a part of programming. There's no doubt about that. We've seen that with ChatGPT. We've seen that with automation. We've seen that with, I don't know if you guys have gone into your code and tried using ChatGPT to write your code. It's a fun process, but it's also very worrisome for some people. Now, we made an entire video about AI and programming. I recommend checking that out. It's gonna be right here because we're not gonna go too in depth, but that video goes really in depth on AI and its effects on the programming industry. But what I do wanna look at is the statistics behind AI. A lot of people are very favorable to using AI, but what are they using it for? They're using it to increase productivity, and a lot of people don't highly trust AI. Now, this kind of goes into the accuracy of AI. Odds are it's gonna write bad code, like 60, 70% of the time, and that's not really a trustworthy thing. But what a lot of people are using is for AI to help write their code, debug, and get help. This doesn't mean AI is gonna take over programming jobs, this means that it's going to serve as a tool for programmers to use within their programming job. The analogy we like to use is farming. Back in the day, you had hundreds of people working on a farm until you invented tractors. Now you didn't need as many people working on a farm because you had a tractor. So take that same concept and apply it to what's going on with AI and programming. AI is going to be your tool, so we're not gonna need as many developers to do the small things, but we are gonna need developers. What's going on now? What's going on now with 2024? What is the job market looking at now? Now, if we look at the job market here, it's been stable from February 2023 to now. Now that's a good sign, that's a good sign. What we don't wanna see is a decline like we saw in May to February. What we wanna see is that stability and growth. And if we take a look at the Bureau of Labor Statistics, this is where we get a lot more information of what's to come and what people are projecting the job outlook to look like. Overall employment of software developers, quality assurance analysis, and testers projected to grow from 25% from 2022 to 2032, much faster than the average for all occupations. There are about 153,000 openings for software developers each year on average over the decade. Many of those openings are expected to result from the need to replace workers who transfer to different occupations or exit the labor workforce. Increased demand for software developers will stem from the continued expansion of software development for artificial intelligence, internet of things, and other automation applications. This is what we want to see. This is the exciting part. Employment 2022, 1.7 million, 1 million. Employment projected in 2032, 2.2 million. These are good signs. This is what we want to see. And while we're in this little phase right now where everything seems to be stable, this gives us some hope that in the future we're going to be seeing a lot more growth. Now to answer the question of should you learn how to code in 2024, I would say the answer is yes. The answer is yes. Just because we're seeing stability and we're not seeing an increase in your influx in the 2024 job market doesn't mean you shouldn't take on a skill like programming. But there are some key things to keep in mind. Employers are no longer looking for just any developer out there. You need to have the right skills and the right skill set to bring value to the team. This means having more than just technical skills, and this is where a lot of people mess up on. They learn one or two languages, they apply for a job, and they think that they're just gonna get in. No, 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 no. We have to stop that. If you want to get a job in 2024, you need to be prioritizing both the soft skills and the technical skills. And when it comes to the technical side of things, you need to be able to write clean and effective code, not subpar code. You need to understand the principles that can help make your code scalable, easy to maintain, and easily adjustable. You also need to be a good problem solver. And I don't mean that as like a cliche as learn how to solve problems. I mean that legitimately. How do you sit back, look at a project and say, okay, I need to do this to make this work. I need to make sure this is able to be accessed by my entire team. I need to be able to look at this holistically and break it down into smaller pieces. How do you create and build cool shit on a professional level? If you're to survive in the 2024 job market and onward, you need to be able to actually hone in on your programming skills. Additionally, as people are saying on Reddit, you have hundreds of people that are competing for the jobs. 
How do you stand out? This is all about your resume and all about are you prepared for the technical interviews? Are you prepared to create something that people can look at and say, okay, this is the guy I want on my team. A good way to do this is something we do on DevSlopes. It's part of our Earn Why You Learn curriculum. We help you land freelance projects to help put on your resume in order to help leverage you into jobs. I want you to think about what employers are seeing when they're looking for software developers. They're seeing an influx of people applying for their jobs with subpar coding skills as well as computer science degrees, a piece of paper, certificates, Udemy certificates, all of these things that are just fluff pieces. This, this isn't gonna stand you out from the crowd. How can you show it to a potential employer, hey, you want me on your team because I can actually provide value. And that's where freelance projects come in. You can showcase your work. You can say, hey, look, I did five freelance projects that I was actually paid to do. People have paid me for my work. And something I also saw on Reddit that this guy hit it on the nail here. How many jobs are you applying to? How picky are you about the jobs you're applying to? What is your response rate on application? So this guy said usually around 10 to 20 a week, I get maybe one first round interview a week if I'm lucky, but I have been rejected after the initial call. And I love what he said, that's low, you should be hitting that per day. This is the thing, you cannot complain about the coding job market being difficult if you're not putting in the time and effort that you need to be. If you're just sending one the same copy and paste resume to everyone and you're not tailoring it for what that business needs, of course you're not gonna be able to get that job. Same thing applies for if you're only sending 10 to 20 job applications a week, you need to be sending 10 to 20 job applications a day. Landing a job in 2024 is not about sending out a copy and paste resume. You need to be able to stand out from the crowd. So to recap on everything, people are worried about software development jobs. The job market has declined as of May, as of June 2022 to February of 2023, but it has remained at a steady pace since then with a subtle incline, a subtle incline, not, not e almost not even worth noting, but it is there, a subtle incline. As we can see, growth 11.9% from low. Programming is still one of the top paying jobs with starting salaries sitting at $89,000 per year and top paying salaries at $165,000 per year. This is specifically for web development, but that's what a lot of people are looking for when they're getting into coding. There were massive layoffs in 2023. We know that for a fact. We've seen the news, we've seen everything with Twitter, with Meta, and we've seen a lot of the affected positions. AI is a part of that effect, and people are finding that they're going to be using AI to help write their code, help debug and get help, and just overall to help improve their experience. AI is gonna be used as a tool. It's not gonna be used as a replacement. With that being said, we then dive into, it is not a time to write subpar code. You need to be able to write code that is scalable, easy to maintain, and interchangeable. You need to be able to write code that works well within a team, and you yourself need to have the soft skills to work well with the, within a team. That means you have the problem solving skills, the teamwork skills, the communication skills. There's no more lone wolfing in programming. And lastly, to bring everyone some ease, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there is a projected growth of 25% from 2022 to 2032, much faster than the average of all occupations. So guys, all encompassing, Programming jobs are still there. Programming jobs are still there. You just have to fight a little bit harder for them. So take this information, digest everything, give yourself some ease and just relax, relax. Programming jobs aren't going anywhere. AI isn't going to come take everyone's job. You're gonna be fine. Programmers are gonna be fine. And if you're interested in learning how to code and you want to dive into coding and you're questioning, man, I don't know, jobs are looking fuzzy, cut that out of your mind. Take the leap, learn the skill. Because at the end of the day, if you do everything right, there's gonna be a job out there for you. That's it for now, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to be on the lookout for more videos that we release. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below on what you think. I wanna know what you guys think about the coding job market, your experiences with it, everything I just said in this video. Thank you guys so much, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Peace.